Welcome back to Cyberpunk Bartender Action. VA11 Hall A. Hex signs, thank you. Thank you for your cheer. Your cheer and your bits. Our illustrious champion returns. Uh, this is the post Burning Man edition, as you can tell by my beautiful, slightly tanned face. I don't really tan, I just melt a little returns. bit. Welcome home. Welcome back. Well, you're in the right place. Come on, come on in. Let's fucking give her. Let's do this thing. Um. All right, we're on break. It's day fifteen. And I think we're getting pretty close to the end. I think. I think we're approaching. Uh. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. So I gotta. I gotta clear. I gotta clear these. Oh, sound designer. I'm always startled by how good that sound is. You ready? Here it comes. Oh. I love that sound so much. It's the best. All right. Um, let's let's pick some music here. <gasps> Kaleri, welcome back. You got any requests? Requests, anybody? What up, guns? Oh, I like that song. That's a good one. No, not two reminiscences. I don't want to reminisce twice. Okay, that's 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 good. Okay, I'm hit. Ugh. Um, Dorothy, you won't get through the bar anytime soon. You can stop walking. Uh, honey. You, um, you want something? She seems like we she's being weird. You're being weird, Dorothy. The usual, I guess. Usual, you, you will, you, oh, she is broken. You were broken. Just why are you so busted? I wonder what's wrong with her, though. I, all right, uh, I need your help. What is she usually like? I haven't played this in a long time. Help me out, y'all. What should we make for this sweet little creature? She likes a, um, the thing, what is it, uh, the, the, um, Piano Woman. That's her, that's her thing, right? Um, that's her, her jam? It's a Piano Woman, yeah, okay. I think I'm gonna just give her a regular one, because she's already pretty fucked up, so. Uh, aged, mixed, done, okay. Here, here, here you go. This is nice. Nice. N n n n nice. N ice. Whoa, she's getting all max headroom on us. Uh, okay, okay, you're... You're freaking me out. What is... Um, what's up with you? Hey, honey. How do you know what's real? How... How so? I mean... How do you know if what you see is an actual thing? I don't. I've been hallucinating recently. I'm not sure what's real and what's not. It's kind of fucked up. How can you tell if what you see around you is actually happening? What tells you everything's not actually a fabrication? What tells me I'm not just a simulation in a computer? Fucking nothing! Nothing's real! Ha <laughs> ha! Woo! And, uh, those, um... Ponderings brought you to the bar? Oh, what? Oh, I'm in the bar. Am I? D Dorothy? So, you're having a solipsistic crisis of sorts. Let's find something more appropriate for solipsistic crises. How about men punching each other? So solip what? Yeah. 
solipsism, uh, it's that thing where you're the only thing that is real. The theory that the self is the only thing that can be known to exist because all we can do is rely on our senses. And currently, the only things that exist, well, even then, is this webcam real? Is this microphone real? Is this computer screen real? Is my mouse even real? Are you real? I don't think so. See, that's another thing right there, that word. Solipsism, what does it even mean? Where the hell does it come from? Well, solus means alone and ipse means self. Thanks, Cross Staves. Yes, but how did it come to be? Do you expect me to believe a lot of people just randomly decided to make noises? And decided, hey, let's make this noise mean this. That's not really how language vault. No, whatever, fuck it. It doesn't make sense. Words don't make sense. I've been repeating words for a long time and they've stopped making sense. Why? Uh... Calm down. That's just semantic satiation. Stop making up words, honey. And then there's this counter. How can I be sure the counter is really here? Uh, it is. Please stop tapping it. Actually, you're not even touching it. Your electrons are being repulsed by its electrons. You can never really touch anything. Hold on. Just making sure. I should make her a drink. At the very least, I'll have something to throw at her. Yeah, let's make her another, another one of these. Stop tapping the counter so much. I'm this close to throwing this at your face. This close. Sorry. <sighs> so, let's start from the beginning. Uh, since when did you have this existential crisis? Since earlier today, I think. I was remembering the good times I had with my, with my guardian. But I don't know, it was all too sudden. I was thinking about everything that happened from a week ago until now. How much fun I was having, how much I loved everyone around me. And out of nowhere, the thoughts started piling up in my mind. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Thank you. Are those feelings real? Is all of that real? Am I real? What tells me I'm actually in a body? What if I'm just some computer somewhere thinking it has a body? What if I'm just a human girl in a comatose dream? Uh, I mean, aren't, aren't we, aren't we all really when it comes down to it? What tells me that you're real? Uh, for all I know, I, I might just be a figment of someone's imagination. Ooh, counter solipsism. Combo breaker. Or even just an AI simulation in some computer that thinks it's human. Uh, I've been there, Dorothy. I've been there. That existential doubt and crisis, that uncertainty about whether or not things are real. It was a couple of months only, but I remember having panic attacks and scratching my arm to feel something. Thanks, Trent Reznor. But the panic attack gave me a rush of adrenaline, so I couldn't feel the scratch, and the fear got worse. What did you do to get over it? Uh, oddly enough, I read a book. The Last Rain in the World, one of my favorites. At one point, I cried with the book, and I realized I was crying over fake things. A story and its characters. I didn't care less for them because they were fake. Why not think of reality like that, too? Even if I'm a figment of someone's imagination, I'd still care about you. Cool, so ships are more real than real. Uh, characters are real. If you're crying about Valhalla, you're doing it right. Just kick in the tears. Just creak, turn on the waterworks. Uh, I mean, that's what I told myself, at least. It wasn't immediate, but that focus helped me. Huh. Uh, I like it. Hey, can I take this drink? I made it for you, but you can't go outside, because liquor laws. You just can't. This is a bar. Thanks. Uh, okay then. Blamp! What? What the shit? What are you- 
Just don't tell anybody. Phew. Why did you throw it on your head? Happy birthday to this drink! She's not part of my system. To feel something you made. Uh, and... It burns. It burns us. And itches a bit. I'll get you a towel. Sylvia for Dana's... Oh, I've been here before. What did... Okay, this is a character we haven't seen in a while. What did What did we do for this guy's voice? Because the, the, like, voice is somebody else. That's what I would have gone with with this guy. The kind of, like, Kaneda, Akira, you know, because that's who it, who it is. But I can't remember if we did a silly voice for this guy. Or if he just had a dude voice. I think he might have just had dude voice. Anyway, Mr. Mario, welcome back. I have a delivery for Dana Zane. Who's that? And she's, um, she's my boss. I'll get it for her. I think he was kind of just dude voice. Right, sign here, please. But then what did I do for, um, just scream Tetsuo a lot? That's fine. Uh, it's a big package. Shut up, fuckboy. I wonder what's inside. You should open it. If it's something perishable, maybe it'll need to be refrigerated. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's... It's a wiener. A wiener is you. A really big wiener. Hey, honey. Hmm? The big package had a big wiener inside. Oh, what'll your boss do with such a thing? Uh, I don't know how she'll cook it. Perhaps she'll chop it. Honey, seems the wiener's too big to eat correctly. <laughs> Stop it! Oh my god, I'm turning into, um... Why can't I remember her name? A red dress, persona, a total blank. I'm turning into her. Maybe you could prepare some right now. What do you say, honey? Do you want some of your boss's wiener? I do. Hey, it's your wiener. You just got it. Seriously, Jill. She's 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 with the wiener stroke. And you're the one trying not to Yukiko all over the place. Anyway, we all know if we dare cook this without her permission, she'll hang us upside down. She'll hang me upside down. Hey, Jacket Boy, what's your name? I'm... I'm Mario. Come on, Mario. I'll buy you a drink. Huh. You might have another delivery, you know. This is the last one. Actually, I'll accept your offer. So I'm totally... The, the dude voice I'm doing is, um, Homestar pretending to be an anime character. <laughs> I'll have a sunshine cloud or perhaps a challenge. Ha <laughs> ha And you? I'm fine. Stinko man will have a beverage. Okay, do it. Fucking. Here you go, Stinko man. You can have all the karma train in the world. Uh. On the rocks, Blendo. 20XD6! <laughs> I love Stinko, man. Here you go. Thanks! Hey, um... Call me Dorothy. You can also call me Darling for the right amount. <laughs> yeah, Dorothy. Why did you buy me a drink? Just to let you know, I don't swing that way. What way? Lilim? Nah, dude. I'm a homosexual. I like to do the man with other men. Alright, bro? It's for bros only. Bronly. Oh, I'm so bronly. Not that there's anything wrong with liking women, but <laughs> straight people. Oh, don't worry. I wasn't hitting on you. I was thanking you. Thanking me? Your package let me see Honey here laughing like an idiot. It's, uh, it's easier than you think. That made me happy, and I don't know, it fit with what she was telling me earlier. I'm more calm than when I entered. 
Usually it goes the other way around. <laughs> Glad to help, I guess. Well, duty calls. Bye, Mario. Bye, John. Bye, honey. Enjoy your big wiener. I'm with you. Oh, it was the, he didn't say that. She did. No, she got his voice. It's fine. <laughs> she seems like a nice girl for a girl. <laughs> I don't mean for it to sound like a... Uh, I, I get it. I get it. Don't worry. You like guys. It's, it's clear. Speaking of, you like a uh, motorcycle, don't you? Oh, I do. Yeah, they're my second favorite thing after dudes. Uh, have you been to the motor district? I spend all my free time in the motor district, actually. Why? Is it true what they say about all the illegal races going on there? Oh, you're not a cop, are you? You'd have to tell me if you're a cop. As far as I remember, no. That's not a very good answer. Well, I mean, uh, there are illegal races, but there's also a semi-legal league going on there. Semi-legal? The authorities acknowledge there's races going on. They don't know what goes on in them, however. Modified engines, casualties, substance abuse, kitten fights. The illegal ones end up being safer in the end. Huh. Have you heard about a biker called Christine Love? Ms. Love? Of course. Everyone knows who she is. What about her? Uh, is her gang as dangerous as they say? I don't know. Nobody knows. Maybe Asmodai or Draco Aeon know. They look intimidating enough, but the truth is nobody's faced them directly. Moreover, nobody wants to be the one that gets beaten to a pulp if they turn out to be what they seem. So our gang is just there, menacingly doing their own thing, not bothering anyone. Oh. Do you want anything else? I'll have a piano, man. Uh, alright. I'm not in the piano, Deckard. I am the piano. Um... So I mix that all in funny order. Gee, fuck! Whoa, hold on. Ha! Huh? Weird, I did not know I could still do that. Uh, let me let me reset that drink. Two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, what? No, fuck. One, two, one, two, three. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. One, two, three. Uh, on the rocks, next. Here. Yeah, this is totally nice. Hey, are you two an item? <laughs> oh. What are you trying to say with that laughter? Gil? No, we're, we're not. What's wrong with you? Eh? You work with this hunk of a man, and you don't feel the least bit tempted? <laughs> Why? How can you be so calm with this smell so close to you? Have you heard the expression, his past is a fucking weight I don't want to carry? Because his past is a fucking weight I don't want to carry. Who knows where he's been the last 11 months? Was he with you, Salvier? If he even has a past at all, I'm having my doubts lately. Are you implying he's not good game? Oh, don't misunderstand. Gil is good game. He's just... He's not bad looking. He's a gentleman. He's always attentive. But he's also distant, and will take many steps back when he feels like he's getting close to somebody. You don't have to marry him. Just push into a closet and... Your... Gay stuff. Eh, uh, not interested. Hey, you annoy me, bartender. You don't see what you have right in front of you, dummy. I'm out. Uh, please come again. Ah, uh, Gil, you heartbreaking fuckboy. Back. Did anything happen? Uh, I discovered I have the sense of humor of an eight-year-old. Did anything new happen? Hey! They brought you a package. Ah, yes, my curated wiener. 
It's a gift from my folks. It was delayed in customs, but here it is. Does anyone else want to share my parents' wiener? You guys want some of it? <laughs> oh my. That's a new one. Alright, wicked. Wieners, 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 wieners. I need to make a lot of money before the 30th or I'll get evicted on my ass. I can't buy anything because I only have fucking 6,000. You've been chuckling since yesterday. Wiener. Just load up wieners.net. Ooh, that bar called Valhalla. Here we go, let's see. Is the is this place any good? I need a place to unwind after work. Normies are taking over, huh? Her everyone's neat just like me. Anyway, place is cool, but the bartender can be a bit of a dick. Just a bit. How so? I've never been there. Wouldn't know. Is she cute? I can take it if she's cute. I can take it if she's cute too. She's cute, but I think she's full of herself. The guy seems a bit more of a bro. I see you already had a conversation with her. Did she reject your advances? Smiley face with a nose? No, I just heard from the distance. So is that a no? Kind of. I mean, if you're just going to their chat. I just want a place to chill for a bit and meet new people. Can I smoke there? Is there any bar from the BTC where you can smoke? Nope. Bummer. Sounds like we're going next week then. Sounds good enough for me. Yoru yori. New season. I need this. I can never remember. These all seem like I've read them before. See you later, Yoru. I knew I know those ones. Let's see this one. Y-I-I-K, the final remaster, leads the video game charts by Lana Smithy, the newest remaster of 2016's remaster of 2016's Y-I-I-K, a postmodern RPG, opens the charts this week. 3.5 million copies shipped on its launch day. Other titles this week include new releases such as Hatsune Miku, Hatsune Miku, Hatsune Miku, Project Remaster, and Sting's Face Remastered. So this is a, obviously Hatsune Miku, uh, and Steins Gate, Sting's Face. Sting's Face Remastered. Full chart including lifetime sales, YIIK Final Remaster 3.5 mil, Hatsune Miku, Project Remaster 1.5 mil, Sting's Face, Water Pro Wrestling G. Dang it, Ron Paul. Dang it, Ron Paul. Woman Marries Anime Pillow. Woman Marries Anime Pillow, no one's actually surprised. This reporter remembers a time when wacky stuff like this made a lot of headlines, but even though I'm reporting on it, I can't help but think how mundane it's become. I mean, we live in a world where you can just plug in to the internet and live there, as long as your wallet can afford related fees. Lots of people get married in these virtual spaces thanks to the new technologies. The traditional view on human relationships have changed so much that someone marrying a literal object feels kind of tame now. I don't think it's fair to call stripping a body pillow. That's not very nice. But hey, here we are. If the pillow had some form of intelligence, it might be... <laughs> It might be different somewhat, but it's just a plain generic anime hug pillow. Go with the times, Grandma! Alright, let's get back to work. <laughs> Alright. You wanna marry me? Can't marry your own son. Can't you, though? Maybe not in Springfield, but here in Shelbyville, we want to be allowed to marry our own hot cousins. Wednesday, December 28th. Ah, uh, Jill, I'm out to get firecrackers. F Metal Gear? It's New Year's, right? We need some. Wouldn't firecrackers scare off the d- Yeah, no, good idea. Go ahead. I'll be back in a bit. Even for a cat lover, you sure get excited about firecrackers a whole lot more when dogs are involved. Uh, I know how hypocritical it sounds, and I don't care. Ha, ah, Jamie's here. Or, bye, Jamie. Greetings. Anyway, let's start. <laughs> that was weird.
We gotta invite the gays. You gotta invite the gays. Oh, the gays are inviting, I guess. It's the best kind of gays, the inviting kind. Time to mix drinks, change lives. Ah, the guy that wouldn't come back twice. See, now I gotta do the other voice. I can't even remember what Kanji's voice. Kanji was just kind of like, oh, like angry. Yeah, shut up. By any chance, did something fly over here two weeks ago? On Friday? Yes. There were lots of weird explosion noises throughout the night. But as far as I understand, those were made by a flying drone or something like that. Uh, so it flew by here. Uh, I take it you know what made the noise? Let's just keep it at whatever drone story you heard. Right. The noise got annoying after a while, I must say. So it remained in the vicinity. <laughs> yeah, just tell everybody to get bent. I don't know what that counts as in the vicinity, but it, yeah. Distant explosions all night. Like when I'm with your mother. Interesting. So it didn't get far away? Huh. Um. Now, give me a Mars Blast. A Mars Blast, you my dick, you fucking jerk off piece of shit. Mars Blast, you fucking. <laughs> Give me Mars Blast. Give me Mars Blast. Give me Mars Blast. Give me Mars Blast. I can't even make it big. Jerk off. Come on, blend that shit. Blend faster. Blend it. There you go. Choke on it. Well, you didn't mess up. Sorry, if I may interject. You looking for a fight? Uh, most certainly not. You really think you'd stand a chance? Yes, fight, 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 fight! You're like half his size. I can fight dirty. He kills people for a living. Yeah, well, I suck dicks for a li- Uh... Whatever, never mind. I can fight dirty. Jill, please, you make me sound like a savage. It would be like me saying you get people drunk for a living. I do, though. It's not wrong, but there are better ways of saying stuff like that. You're right. Uh, s sorry. And like I said, I'm not looking for a fight. I just noticed you seem to like strong drinks. What about it? Well, to be honest, it's a rare sight in this bar. Everyone drinks baby drinks like water and tea and bullshit. Do you drink bullshit, son? I'd even come to believe I'm the only one here who enjoys them, aside from the owner. May I suggest you try a suplex next time? It might be to your liking. Uh... Okay, let's try this suplex thing. Alright, let's give Ingram a suplex. Put it in your face hole, motherfucker! Here. Oh, good stuff. Like a less burning but punchier pile driver. Say, your face looks somehow familiar, mister. Call me Jamie, and you are? I'm Ingram. Anyway, I think I saw your face somewhere. Maybe when I needed to look for a specific file at... I've said too much. Did you perhaps go through a nanomachine expunge? Uh, I did, actually. Figured as much. Why did the music get all weird and ominous in here all of a sudden? And almost all those people are people with nanomachine rejection. They feel oddly suicidal. So why go through the whole thing? Rejection? Need to hide something? The second one. It's easier to remain undetected when they have no means to track you or your activity. I see. How does the expunge work? You drive a Ferrari down the Autobahn as fast as you can. Wind whipping through your cyber hair, smoking your electronic cigarettes. You look over at your friend Fabio. He looks super cool and bronzed. You also look cool. You look at yourself in the rearview mirror. 
You're going everywhere, baby. You lie in a pressure chamber, and they give you a special IV solution. It causes nanomachine rejection while giving the antibodies needed to prevent them from getting back in. For five hours, you're trapped in bed while a horrible pressure builds up in your body, and nanomachines are forced out. They're like little needles all over your body. You feel them in your eyes, in your gums, in your toes, fucking everywhere. And after all that, they need to implant you with a mechanism that constantly releases the same antibodies. Ouch. What are you having, Jamie? This is a gut punch. Yeah, should have figured. Hey, give me one of those. Man, you're drinking a lot. Got to punch it. Bozo. Ah, shit. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One of those, two of those, and then just fucking load it up with the booze hole. Bam. Yeah, I love these. It looks different from yours, though. Uh, I add a couple of extras in his, actually. So, where's the antibody unit they stuck you with, Jamie? It's inside, like all other maintenance systems. It can be troublesome at times, but the perks of not having nanomachines in the body outweigh the cons. And the rest of the enhancements? Were you reconstructed, or have you been adding them over time? Over time, either by getting a much needed enhancement or through fixing injuries. I see. Well, it was a pleasure, Jamie, but I gotta leave. Nice meeting you, Ingram. Now smooch. Fucking smooch it out. Don't count on it. Fuck that guy. Shut up! Seemed like a nice guy. I'd like to touch his butt. Huh, <laughs> right. I won't call him a bastard, but he's not the nicest in the bunch. Maybe you caught him on a bad day. Listen, he didn't ask for this. I did not. You didn't. No one asked for this. Did you ask for this? Whose pizza is this? Nah, I think you're just good at bringing out the nice side in people. Oddly enough. Oh, that guy tires the hell out of me. Someone's in a good mood. Give me a bad touch, will you? That way you'll be in a good mood, too. Bad touch for Alma, coming up. Rocks, mix, done, drinky. <laughs> Jell, you have such a petty sense of humor. Guilty as charged. So, we'll put you in a good mood. <laughs> oh yeah, that. Uh, today, my sister was supposed to be in court for all the custody proceedings. Of course, not only does she not show up li Wait, hold on. Uh, I already had too much to drink. Not only does she show up later than her husband, she's drunk at that, but also dressed like she got fucked in the back of a parking lot. And everybody knows you want to get fucked in the front of a parking lot because that's where the parking lot is the most sensitive. There's a lot of nerve endings in the front of a parking lot. Also, cheers to you, Scoopity. And to top it off, she forgot to even bring her kids. Luckily, my parents brought them to court. The judge assigned the kids to my parents for the time being. So she really messed it up, huh? When they came back to the house and Diana started throwing a temper tantrum, she said it was lucky her husband didn't get the kids because the angst would make her jump onto the highway. So... Ava comes and says, then make sure it kills you, because we aren't dealing with you as a cripple. Gross. I shouldn't reinforce that behavior, but like, totally lol. I don't know. Maybe it was the timing, but I've been laughing for an hour now. Also doing nitrous. Doing nitrous and laughing and laughing and doing nitrous. I'm gonna pass out. You hold quite the animosity for Diana, don't you? She and I used to be the closest friends when I was seven or eight. We played all the time. We even slept in the same bed for a while. And then she turned into a teenager. And then we stopped playing. She had other things she wanted to do. I can forgive all of that. I mean, the age difference and all. But there's something in particular I still can't forgive. It was a day she invited her friends to the house. I went to ask her something. And as I was leaving, one of her friends asked if I was her sister. And she said she had no little sisters. Whoa. Gag me. 
avec le spoon. I think that was the moment that broke the pedestal I held her on. I admired her as much as a kid could admire someone, you know? And little by little, that admiration wore off, so finally, we just reached the breaking point. I felt betrayed. And you haven't been able to forgive her after 40 years. Hey, it's not that I still hold a grudge against her, but rather that Diana, who said all those things so many years ago, is the same Diana I know today. Um, how, how so? She hasn't matured one bit. She's still as selfish, childish, and immature as she was back then. When you see her, you don't see an adult. You see an overgrown, horny teenager. So, aside from destroying any admiration I held for her, she's made sure not to fix that impression. Huh. But, enough about me. How are you doing? Oh, you know, everything's fine, aside from this note. A note? Remember how I told you I lashed out of my dead girl... F my dead... X's sister? Yeah. I got this note from her. Let's see. Mm hmm. Oh. Oh, wow. She must feel really bad about that whole thing. Plus, it's like totally written in an angry samurai voice, so that means it's serious. Uh, yeah, as do I. So, what's the problem then? The same fear that drove me away from her in the first place. Right, you big scaredy pants. Give me a Brentini, will you? There's a little story I want to, like, tell you. Right. Brand Martin Brentini. Martin Brandoni. This is the thing. Let's start. Boo! Oh, hell no. Okay, this is my hallucination. The signal's gone off, and the, uh, This is the story all about how my life got flipped turned upside down, and I just like to take a minute, so... So right there, I'm gonna tell you how I became the Prince of Bel-Air. Soon, uh, it became animosity, and not long after that, she distanced herself completely from said sister. With time, the girl would become attached to her eldest sister, looking up to all of her achievements. All I can look at right now are those boobs. Not now. Said sister would even marry the girl's best friend, and not soon after. And after the girl went into college, said sister would quit her job. And the sister was worried sick about leaving her baby kid alone, probably going to quit her high-ranking job. What if they hire your high-ranking lips? Inappropriate. Oh, shut up. The girl, even as an adult, felt betrayed. Her role model sister went against everything she held her in high esteem for. She was no longer a child, and yet she felt like a part of her had crumbled. Hey, Joe, I can lift her sweater. Do you want to see? I bet you want to see. <laughs> I fucking love that robot voice. Uh, all right, enough. Uh, enough? Ch shit. Peace out, motherfuckers. Uh, I mean... I know the girl is you and the sister is your eldest sister. Just get to the point. Right. So the point is, if you don't face her, she'll be heavily disappointed. And she's trying to make amends with you. That must take courage. Lots of it. Yeah, I mean, okay. Yeah, you're, you're right. My mouth's dry. Can I get a... Beer... Uh, yeah. Beer o nomimasu. And to mix. Thanks. So, tell me, did you and this Gabby girl get along? Oh, uh, yeah. I never had brothers and sisters, but once Lenora introduced me to me, to hurt me, introduce me to her as her sister-in-law. She got so excited about having a new sister that she clung to me uh, a lot. Um, Unsen wie dance. I helped her with her study. We read books together. I played with her a lot. She was pretty much my sister too. This is why this game is taking me forever to beat, because I'm dicking around like this. I have to leave, but I'll tell you this. 
As both a big and a little sister, if you don't grant that girl the chance of talking to you, I'll never forgive you. Betch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a small New Year's party this Saturday if you're interested. Oh, sure. I'll be here. Remember, I won't forgive you. Yeah, yeah. I'll go take my break. All right. Ugh! You were here? You were quite absorbed in the conversation just now. Jamie even said goodbye to you. you didn't you hear? Anyway. Call me if anything comes up. Yatta! All right, my friend. Let's take a short break. Visit the discotheque. Put on your favorite turtleneck sweater. And we'll come back for more Valhalla. Thank you for coming. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 